Always keep a pair of secateurs in my pocket. Sometimes you just come across a bramble. It's so much easier with a, with a pair of secateurs. The loppers will do most smaller stuff. That kind of size, even that size. These two, it's probably better to use either of the saws. And as you do it, just try and hold it back a bit like that so it doesn't lean back on the cut. So the bill hook is the right tool just to clean it off. We call it snedding. I don't use a glove. I just think you've got a much better contact um, with your hand. With a glove, you could lose it. Aiming backwards, so anything you're cutting off there, you've got a piece of wood between you and the blade. Then when you get to a certain stage, you can cut the whole thing off with one. It's best to um, cut at an angle like that. You'll find it, it will cut much easier. Next step up would be a bow saw. With a tight copper, sometimes it's, it's not easy, but I always put a little cut on one side. They call that a step cut, and then come through from the other. This tree is hung up there, and there's a little bit of tension and compression in this, and you can see, if I cut through from that way, the whole thing is going to be squeezing onto my saw cut. So in this instance, I would probably cut from the underneath, like that. That's all very easy. And the whole thing just falls off like that. I'm just going to put it on my knee and then the pressure is downwards on that so it's going to it's going to make the saw cut open like that which is easier for me so I'll come through from this side. So this is a fro for splitting billets. You usually try to split 50-50. You usually get the best split like that. Otherwise they can sometimes run off. This is a bit unusual and it hasn't been split already. It's been sawn. So I must have taken that off my sawmill. But it's a piece of ash. It's a little bit knotty down there, but I'm not looking for a huge length. So we should be able to get something out of it. And that was a bit of an effort. I cut it maybe two winters ago, so it's fairly dry and it's difficult. And you can see it's sort of holding itself together. These knotty areas here made it quite difficult. But there's potentially four legs to be had out of here. This one is slightly more technical. It's a side axe and you just see the handle there has got a crank in it. If I'm siding up a piece of wood, then my knuckles aren't brushing against it the whole time. Also on the bevel there, it's more rounded on that side and it's flatter on that side and that stops it digging in too much. I'm going to just take quite a lot of the waste off with it um, before we get onto a finer tool, something like the draw knife. And notice I'm swinging like that, so it bounces off anything like that, chips on that, it's not coming towards me. So this is an old traditional clamping method, it's called a shave horse. You put your piece of wood in there clamp it down hard and you can work on the piece of wood here. Nowadays I use a, a vise. The whole thing can be clamped up nice and solidly whilst you work on the piece. This is a draw knife. You'll notice it's got two handles on it, that's for control, and it's got a very sharp blade on it. And when you're working on any piece of wood really, if you've got a sharp blade and you can hold it firmly, I mean that's half the battle. Um, too many times you have a blunt blade and you've not really got it clamped well enough and it can end in disaster. So, so this is probably a um, two year old piece of wood which, is, which does make it more seasoned than you'd like to use for green wood working. But it's still workable, I still work on it. It looks, when I'm doing it, I've got a chance of 
cutting myself like that. Um, I haven't heard of anyone doing that. It's really unusual. You seem to have a natural reaction to be able to sort of pull like that. Eventually going to be legs for these half log benches. And that's just a simple tenon in a mortise. The great thing about owning a wood is that you've got a lot of things, you've got a lot of resources here anyway. We can make benches, we can make tables, we can put up shelters, and we can make kindling, we can make tea, and we can be almost self-sufficient in the woods, which is great.